Hey everybody, so this video is going to cover the properties of exponents and it's just going to go over some general practice. Before we get into the problems, let's just review some of the major things involving the properties of exponents. First of all, here's one thing you should recall, that if you are multiplying two powers that have the same base, in this case we have an x3 and an x-2, uh, if you multiply two powers with the same base, you add the exponents. So again, because we are multiplying and we have the same base, x and x, we are adding 3 and negative 2 to get positive 1 right there. Another major concept you need to know is that anything that is raised to the power of 0, that automatically becomes 1. There is also the division rule. If you are dividing the same power with the, or if you are dividing the same base, you just subtract the powers. Uh, because we have a seven in the numerator, we are going to be doing our subtraction in the numerator. So seven minus five is two, uh, and that x two is still in the numerator because technically we could put that entire thing over one, and that would prove that it is still a fraction. Another rule, when you have negative exponents, you need to flip whatever term has the negative exponent. So in this specific example, I'm just going to go ahead and set up our fraction bar for our final answer. You will notice that the x negative 4 is now in the denominator. That is because there is a negative exponent. And whenever you have a negative exponent on a variable, it needs to move to the opposite part of the fraction that it was already on. So the x negative 4 was in the numerator. It flips to the denominator. Also notice, the exponent becomes positive at that point. It was a negative 4, it is now a positive 4. So uh, keep that in mind whenever you do a flip. The v negative 2 in the denominator, that is also going to flip up to the numerator. And then the y3, well that stays put because the 3 was already positive. So that means the entire y variable does not leave the numerator. A couple more rules, you have the power to a power rule. That is where you have a power that is being raised to another power. In this case, we have 6 being raised to the power of negative 2, or x6, I should say, being raised to the power of negative 2. You basically just multiply the two powers together, and that's it. But be careful. Sometimes when you do that, you wind up having a negative exponent. And just like from the rule that we discussed right here, you cannot have negative exponents in your final answer. So you will have to turn this x negative 12 into a fraction and then flip it upside down, and then the x 12 will be in the denominator. And since there was nothing left in the numerator, we just put a 1 there. All right, so basically we're going to go through 10 problems, and they are of a varying level of difficulty. Uh, if you want to try to get some additional practice out of this YouTube session, go ahead and just pause the video and see if you can work out the problem, and then hit resume, and then I will explain it for you. So before every question, I'll pause briefly so that you could pause the video. Uh, if you don't pause the video, then you'll just start hearing me explain. So if you want to pause for number one, go ahead and do that now. All right, so here's what you have to do. Basically, this entire expression is surrounded by parentheses that are being raised to the power of zero. So basically, the power-power rule is happening here with the entire thing being raised to the power of zero. So that means you multiply all of the exponents together. But negative five times zero is zero. Two times zero is zero. And negative five on the y is still gonna give you a zero because you're still multiplying by zero. From the previous slide, we discussed that anything that is being all multiplied together and raised to the power of zero, well, all of those things are just going to become one. And one times one times one is still one. So number one is D. Oh, and by the way, uh, from the very beginning of the problem, the entire expression was being raised to the power of zero. We didn't even have to do all of this work over here. You could have just said immediately, because this entire thing is being raised to the power of zero, we know the answer has to be one, and that could have been your conclusion right there. All right, again, if you want to pause for question two, do that now. Okay, just like question one, uh, we have a negative five that is being raised, that the entire uh, expression is being raised to, so we have to use the power to power rule and distribute that negative five to all of the powers. So, uh, oh, and something else to keep in mind, the negative signs that you see, I'll just back that up so you can see it again, the negative signs that you see in front of the u5 and the u negative five, those negative signs are just representing negative ones that are in front of both of those variables. 
In addition to that, because this entire expression is being multiplied together, Due to the commutative property, you could rearrange those negative ones and multiply them together right now because that product would be a positive one. And basically having a positive one multiplying things isn't exactly going to change anything. So you can essentially ignore those negative signs for the remainder of the problem because we just simplified them to make a, neg a positive one. In any case, the uh, looking right over here, the u5 is multiplying with the negative 5, and that is giving us u negative 25. The same thing happens with the uh, u negative 5 in the middle, but remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, which is why we have a positive 25 right there. v also multiplies with the negative 5, and you get another negative 25. Keep in mind that because we are multiplying uh, the same base, the letter U, we would add those exponents. And negative 25 plus 25 is 0. So you get a U raised to the power of 0, which is just going to equal 1. So all we're left with is the V negative 25. But again, you can't end a problem with the negative exponent, so let's put a 1 under it and then flip it so that we now have a positive v25. But because it was in the numerator and there is now nothing in the numerator, well, we have to put a 1 there. There has to be something in the numerator. So uh, the correct answer is C. All right, here's question 3. Feel free to pause. All right, so in this problem, we again have the power power rule happening but before I'm gonna do that just notice what I went ahead and did uh, I rearranged using the commutative property all the terms in this expression so that all of the ones with the same bases were next to each other notice how it started off by saying X and then Y but now in what I re rewrote we have the two X variables next to each other this is something that you should try to be doing in your head, but if you need to write it out, that's perfectly fine. This is using the commutative property to make the simplifying of this problem easier. You want the terms that have the same base to be next to each other so you can easily apply the exponent properties with uh, a less likelihood of making a mistake. So in any case, after rearranging this problem, uh, I'm now going to go ahead and just combine those x's because it does say x4 and then x negative 4. Remember, when you have the same base, you just add the exponents together. So we have x0 in that, in that case. And then y2 and y4 make y6. Remember, though, uh, we are raising this entire thing to the third power, but the x to the power of 0, well, that's just going to become 1. So it's really not going to matter at this point because multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. So we are just left with y6 being multiplied by the 3, or being raised to the power of 3. So we multiply 6 and 3, and that is how you get y18 as your final answer. All right, uh, question 4, if you want to pause and work it out, you should go ahead and do that. All right, so uh, the first thing to notice, it, it drew in really quick there, but uh, the, the negative a in the, uh, in the first part of the expression, that has a power of 1. And that matters because your first step is going to be doing the power power rule. And when you multiply the powers of 3 right there, you definitely have to make sure you are multiplying the power of 1 on that a variable. Everything is raised to the power of 1 if there is no exponent written there. You have to remember that. It doesn't matter if it is any letter. It has the power of 1. It could be a number all by itself. It is still being raised to the power of 1. The 1 will not always be written there. So when you multiply the uh, power of 3 to the 1 and the 2, you will have an a3 and then a b negative 6. And then uh, 4 times 3 is going to give you 12. So all three of these terms are being multiplied together. So you can again see that by the commutative property, I just rearranged it so that the A3 and the A12 are next to each other. And then because we are multiplying two things with the same base, we would add the exponents together. So that is where the A15 came from. I added 3 plus 12. And then the b negative 6, because it has a negative exponent, it has to be moved to the denominator, so it will flip, and your correct answer is A. Now, something that I did not discuss in this problem is the fact that we do have negative 1s for our uh, coefficients right there, but 
rather than bog you down with discussing the importance of those negative ones, I already knew that they weren't going to be involved in the final answer, and the quiz you are going to deal with this week will not have anything that sneaky with those negative ones, so it'll suffice for me to say those negative ones would have multiplied together at a later point in the problem, and it would have become a positive one anyway. So, not the end of the world. I don't like skipping things over, but uh, that is just something I'm letting go because it's not the most important thing right now. We are discussing the properties of exponents, not negative ones. All right, pause for question five if you want to work it out. All right, here's how we can begin this problem. We have in the numerator two of the same variable multiplying together the x's, so you can add the negative one and the negative two on the x variables. In addition to that, in the denominator, you have the power to a power rule happening where that exponent of 4 will multiply with the negative 5s on uh, both of those exponents. So basically, you will have an x negative 3 in the numerator, the y2 will be untouched, and then you will have an x negative 20 and a y negative 20. Again, there's a negative exponent right here, but you're raising it to the power of 4, which just turns it into a 1. Because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, that is all positive 1. Again, not the most important thing to worry about the negative, ex the negative 1s right now. We are talking about the exponent properties. All right, moving on, uh, we have a couple things we could do rearranging-wise. We have some negative exponents, so we can more easily solve the problem if we just turn them positive. The x negative 20 from the denominator is going to move to the numerator. The y 20 from the, the y negative 20 from the denominator will move up to the numerator because, again, we have negative exponents, so those terms have to flip. The y 2 stays because it had a positive exponent, so it's not going to flip at all. And then the x negative 3 moves to the denominator because you had a negative exponent right there. Now we're ready to do a couple things. First of all, the y's are next to each other multiplying, so that means we can add those exponents together, 20 and 2. But the x's are being divided, so that means you will be subtracting the exponents of 20 and 3. And again, 20 is the bigger exponent, it is larger than 3, so you will be doing 20 minus 3 in the numerator. That's where your answer will be, in the numerator, because 20 is a larger exponent than 3. So, uh, the y's will now say 22 and the x's will now say 17, and it leaves you with a 1 in the denominator. So that would be uh, the correct answer of D. Keep in mind, because of the commutative property, we can flip these around, and now it is the same answer that is written there for choice D. All right, here's question 6, if you want to pause and work that one out. All right, so here's how we're going to begin. You have the power to a power rule happening right there with the negative 2, so we are going to raise those exponents to uh, the power, or we're going to multiply those exponents by negative 2. Your, uh, oh, in addition to that, the y negative 2 from the beginning of the problem, that can be flipped to the denominator. There's no reason not to. You might as well make the exponent positive. The uh, x, y squared stays the same, but when you multiply the negative 2 in the numerator, the uh, negative 4 times negative 2, that is going to make positive 8, and then negative 1 times negative 2, that's going to make positive 2. Again, we have a negative 1 in front of the x variable, but because it's being raised to the power of negative 2, it will ultimately just become positive 1. So uh, let's not worry about that right now, just focus on the exponent properties. Uh, moving along, we are multiplying in the denominator. Those y variables have the same base, and because we are multiplying, you would add those exponents together. This time, I am choosing not to rewrite the expression as y2 times y2 times x. We have been discussing the commutative property enough. You can rearrange these three terms so that your y variables are next to each other, and then you can add the exponents that way as well. So you get a y4 in the denominator. We also have an x8 in the numerator and then an x1 in the denominator. So that means you would be subtracting. And then because the x in the denominator has an exponent of 1, well, 1 is less than 8. So you will be doing your subtraction in the numerator. 8 minus 1 is 7. And then the y2 is still there from uh, the numerator before. 
And lastly, we are dividing those y variables, so that means we will be subtracting again with the exponents. Because y4 is a larger exponent than y2, we will be doing our subtraction in the denominator. So we will have a y2 in the denominator. One important negative one that I will discuss is the one that is actually in front of the entire problem, which I wasn't even talking about until right now. Uh, it's just a negative sign. You can see there it's just a negative sign. It's not in either the numerator or denominator. If you had to put it one, way or one place, put it with the numerator. But basically that negative sign just represents a negative one that is multiplying the entire answer at the end of the problem. So there really wasn't a need to discuss it until now because now we're at the end of the problem, so the entire thing becomes negative because of that negative one. It's just something small to keep track of as we get further and further into the school year. But for right now, the properties of exponents were the top priority. All right, here's question seven if you want to hit pause to work it out. All right, so beginning the problem, we have a lot going on here. Uh, different places you could begin. Here's one idea. In the numerator, you have the power to a power rule happening again, so you're going to need to multiply those exponents together. In addition to that, notice in the denominator, all of the terms are being multiplied together, and we have some of the same bases that we could also combine. Oh, but in the numerator, uh, m negative 3 uh, multiplied by negative 4, that gives you an m12, positive 12, and then n will also have a positive 16 when you multiply. In the denominator, you have m negative 3 and m5. Because this entire denominator is being multiplied together, you could rearrange those m variables to be next to each other, and then you can more appropriately multiply them, but you're adding the exponents because they are having the same base. So negative 3 plus 5 is going to give you 2, m2. And then n, 3 plus 4, will give you a 7. We don't have any negative exponents anymore, so we can just move on to the uh, subtracting step. Because we have m variables that are being divided, we will need to subtract the exponents, 12 and 2. And then because 12 is larger than 2, we will be doing that subtraction in the numerator, 12 minus 2. That gives us an m10. Likewise, uh, the n's are being divided, so we will subtract those exponents as well. 16 minus 7, that is going to give us a 9. So we have m10, n9, and that is the answer, choice C. All right, here's question 8. All right, so in the denominator, let's go ahead and do the power-to-power -power rule. In case you hadn't noticed, most of the time, I am doing the power-to-power -power rule first. I think it's a very good property to use in the beginning because it gets rid of your parentheses, and it sets you up to make other things move faster within the problem. So I always recommend doing the power-to-power -power rule first if you can. Uh, in any case, in the numerator, you are also multiplying those b variables together, so the, that means those exponents will add. So uh, the a negative 2, I'm just going to leave it up there for right now rather than flipping it to the denominator. The b5 times b2 leaves you with a b7. You add 5 and 2 to get 7. And then in the denominator, negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12, and then 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Uh, again, there is a negative right there, but uh, that negative 1 that is being represented right here, it's just being raised to the power of negative 4. It will become a positive 1 anyway. We're discussing properties of exponents here. Don't worry about the negative 1. Uh, we have a few little things we have to rearrange. First of all, the a negative 2 from the numerator flips to the denominator because it had a negative exponent. The a12 stays put because it had a positive 12 as its exponent. The b12, negative 12, moves to the numerator and becomes a positive b12, and then b7 stays put. Uh, b12 and b7 are multiplying together. That means you add 12 and 7, and you get 19. Likewise, in the denominator, you get an a14. Again, though, that negative sign at the front of the problem was representing a negative 1. And that negative 1 is not doing anything to the rest of the problem, so at the very end, it simply turns it negative. So that's why the answer is B. And here's question 9. I would say if you do pause this, it shouldn't take you more than uh, 30 seconds to figure this one out. I'm not even going to... Stop talking. I mean, it's so simple. Sometimes knowing the answer when you don't have to do anything is just as important as knowing how to do the work. 
Uh, it just says Y2, X5. You know, it equals itself. That was a no-brainer. Pretty easy. All right, last question, number 10. Uh, basically, we have a long expression. I would say definitely pause the video and try to work it out because this is the last one that we'll be doing. All right, here's how you begin. Both the J and the K inside of the parentheses have exponents of 1. Do not forget, a letter without an exponent means there's an exponent of 1. So if you look at that J that is in answer choice B that has an exponent of 1, you don't have to write it. You just have to know that it is there. I would begin by multiplying the uh, power of 2 to all of the powers inside the parentheses. So we're going to get a J2, a K2, and an H negative 6. Now keep in mind, all of these terms are multiplying together. I'm just dropping the parentheses now. We are done with, uh, with that part of the problem. We've now you know, rewritten it right down here. Uh, and because all of these terms are multiplying together, we can rearrange them using the commutative property. I'm not going to rewrite these, um, all these terms next to each other, but basically you could write your h's next to each other with the h4 and the h negative 6 because of the commutative property. You're allowed to rearrange multiplication. In any case, though, if we did write them next to each other, you would be adding the exponents together because you would be uh, multiplying two powers with the same base. So 4 and negative 6, that makes an h negative 2. j negative 1 and j2 make a j positive 1. You're adding negative 1 and 2. And then k5 and k2 make a k7. Because we have a negative exponent, we have to turn this into a fraction and flip things over. The j1 and the k7 stay put, but the h negative 2 moves to the denominator, and you get a final answer of uh, choice b. So guys, I hope this video helps you understand the properties of exponents a little bit better. If you do have any additional questions, please come and ask me during class. Uh, we pretty much hit every single property, so if this doesn't prepare you for the quiz, come in and ask questions, and we will do our best to get there. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Uh, have a nice day.